Hey, 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 it's Tia, baby. And I am back with another video. So I'm going to read some of chapter 11. So let's get started. I'm going to read half of chapter 11. And then I'll read the last part of chapter 11 tomorrow. Things had already been going well for the band. Now, after winning the Grammy, it was like one of those lawnmowers that you pull to start and it doesn't want to start. You keep at you keep at it though, and the lawnmower sputters and stops, sputters and stops until all of a sudden you get it and the lawnmower zooms off. That's how it felt for us. There was always something that needed to be done, and that thing would be linked to something else, which was linked again to another thing we were asked to do. It was incredible how much we were traveling and playing, how many bands and singles we were selling, and how much anyone loves, everyone loves Selena. Her appeal went from far beyond what she did musically. For instance, Selena recorded a public service announcement for a battered woman's shelter. Every time a radio station aired this tape, put an end to the pain, the phones lit up with Spanish callers who had heard Selena's voice and decided to improve their lives by seeking help for themselves. Selena never took any of this ad adoration for granted. She was always humble and worried constantly that she might not be working hard enough. She was dictator's daughter, no question about that. She had his drive and work ethic, coupled with a creative spark and all her own. And late in the late 1993, the Quintanilla family decided to use their new credibility and approved financial position to start Q Productions, a production company and record recording studio of their own in a former body shop near the airport in Corpus Christi. Dictator had always wanted to have a world-class studio close to home, and he envisioned eventually heading up his own label. He managed that company while ABCDMG formed the Fat Cat Groove Production Company. Both Dictator and ABCDMG were interested in producing the work of new artists, mainstream commercial groups, as well as the Hano and expanding the, the Quintanilla music dynasty. Selena soon followed with a business of her own in January 1994, when she finally opened the boutique she had talked about for so long. Dictator was fit to be tied when he heard about Selena's decision. What is wrong with you? No, Dictator. What What is wrong with you? You took some, you made the money that, the this is what I don't understand. The money that he made or whatever or took, you know, he used that money to form Q Productions, but she can't use her own money that she make, which I feel like she didn't get enough of to get her um to open up her own boutique to for her to make her own money he got a problem with it but i guess because it's her money and the boutique that she will be making money from will be in her pocket along with the her um her stash and it won't be coming right it won't become no money will be going in his pocket so he got a problem with that and he probably felt like the boutique would take away of her time as a musician, which means less money in his pocket. That's probably why he did not want her to do the boutique. It probably really had nothing to do with the fact that she would be burnt out. That's part that was part that was Chris' concern, but I think his concern was the fact that if that he was afraid that the boutique would take more of his, her time, which means more away from the music, which means money less money coming in his pocket. I'm just saying. That's just my theory. I'ma read on. Shaking his head, how could you even think about opening another business? Do you know how much time that will take and how much harder you, you're making your life? Why don't you just enjoy the money you're making? Selena told Hell Firm, it's what I want to do, Dad, she said, and it's my life. Still not willing to give up on dis dissuading his daughter. Dictator pulled me aside next. You can't let her do this. He said desperately, she'll burn herself out. I get why you're worried about her biting off more than she can chew. I said gently, but this is something she really wants to do. And I'm not going to tell Selena no. If anything, I'll do whatever I have to do to help her. Despite his own ambitious, ambitious nature, 
Dictator thought that Selena was making a huge mistake. He couldn't really stop her, though. Selena and I were financially independent, and as I had already realized, Dictator never really did control Selena as much as other people thought he did, especially after she married me. Boom. I think some people may have had the mis had mis had the mistaken impression that Dictator dictate dictated every aspect of Selena's life because she often relied on him to run interference for her. If someone came to her with an idea that didn't thrill her, she would say, that sounds interesting, but you need to talk to my dad. This happened many times as Selena got more popular and more people tried to convince her to invest in one thing or another that they were working on. I'll have to run it by my dad. She would say, but that was simply her way of ending the conversation. So when Selena came to me one night and said, okay, Chris, I'm ready to open my boutique. I don't want to wait anymore. Let's go shopping for a building. I knew there was nothing that Dictator could could do to dissuade her. As I had told Dictator, I would help her any way I could. But first I had to be sure that Selena knew what kind of work was involved. You're going to be busier than you already are, I reminded her. And you already don't have enough hours in the day. We can do it, she promised. I'm not going to do I'm not going to do all of the work. I'll get people to help me. You really want this, huh? I asked. What do you think? She made a face at me. You've only been listening to me talk about this for two years, but I wanted a boutique my own of my own since I was a little kid. Okay, then I said, let's get it going. Truthfully, I would have been cool just to, just being a uh, just by being a musician. I didn't need or want to open another business, but I knew about the fashion business you could write on the head of a pen. But there was nothing in the world that Selena wanted more than this. I also figured that even if Selena wound up discovering that owning a a fashion boutique didn't live up to her fantasy or suit her lifestyle. At the very least, she would have had a chance to get the idea of her system out of her system. Selena and I started scout scooping out commercial buildings for lease or for sale all over Corpus. At last, we found the right place at 1950s frame, a 1950s frame house at 4926 Everhart. We loved the building because of its classic style. The location was perfect too, close to Corpus Christi's biggest shopping centers, which had been built in the past decade. The building was for sale at a good price and there were new businesses springing up all around it. This area has great potential, Selena said, and I agree. We went down to the bank and did the paperwork to finance the sale then started looking around for a contractor. Once we settled on a contractor recommended by one of our friends, Selena began drawing pictures of what she wanted the boutique to look like. This was one of those thing, times when Selena most appreciated my help, I think. I had grown up around, I had grown up around a stepfather who was very handy around the house. I'd help him renovate rooms and do an additional on the house, an addition on the house I grew up in. So I knew some handyman basics. Selena would describe her ideas to me as she sketched them out, and I helped her get these ideas across to the contractor. I had never seen Selena more excited than when she started playing around with her building plans and talking about the interior details for her boutique. She envisioned selling her own fashion designs here and having an in-house salon where clients could get their hair done and nails done. After the contractor had finished the major part of the renovations, Selena and I went in and did some of the finish work. I really want there to be a lot of light in here, Selena explained, pointing out the way she wanted to place windows between the manicure stations. To satisfy her request, I ended up installing glass blocks, block walls between the manicure stations, which were arranged in a zigzag fashion along a big table. I had to go out and buy a kit to figure out how to make the glass walls, but in the end, I managed. Her mom was the only member of the family who supported Selena's dream as immediately and completely as I did. Selena has wanted to do this ever since she was a little girl. 
she told me and i'm so glad she got she's got you to help her marcella made me made these crazy looking vines that i put up around the top of the salon I also bought a high-end sound system so that Selena could have high-quality sound in her boutique and ran the wires so nothing would show. It was still it took several months for us to in, to secure the building permits and complete the remodeling. Selena did then did the hiring process herself because she wanted to handpick the women who was was staff her boutique. She had also met a young Texan fashion designer, Martin Gomez, who agreed to help her transform the design she envisioned in her mind. And in two dimensions, as sketches on paper into exciting three-dimensional clothing and accessories. Selena's overall goal was to make the, in the kinds of dramatic outfits and accessories that she liked to wear on stage or for a night out and sell these to the public at affordable prices. Selena even designed the tags that would be sewn into the clothing, just a small thing, a label on a piece of clothing, but again, it was her very own and it looked professional. To think of something and dream about it for so long, and then to realize that dream is incredible, is an incredible accomplishment for anyone. To Selena, it was the definition of happiness. I was con constantly amazed by her energy and met attention to detail as selena got her new venture off the ground especially because she was still performing non-stop and keeping her contract contractual agreements with sponsors like coca-cola and agree shampoo at the same time selena never forgot where her heart was she was still making time to do charity work like speaking to children in schools about the importance of education and various stay in school jamborees during one visit to a local middle school her for instance i sat in the audience while selena went up to the podium microphone in hand she locked looked earnestly at her young audience kids who were the same age as she was when she started in the music business as a singer and told them straight up not to follow her path but to stay in school music isn't a very stable business she said it comes and goes and so does money but your education stays with you. If you have a dream, Selena added, don't ever let anyone take that away from you. The impossible is always possible. The, the kids went wild, especially when Selena sang for them. Then she went down off the stage and stood among the middle school students. She autographed anything and everything they handed to her with the kind personal word for each child. It was an exhausting time, a truly wild ride, yet being beside Selena every step of the way and watching the look of pleasure on her face as we successfully hurdled every obstacle from gutting the place to painting the walls and hanging the neon signs with her name on it made our efforts worthwhile to me. Together with hard work and determination, we brought her dream to life. It looks awesome, I said, putting my arm around Selena's waist as we gazed up at the newly hung neon sign with her, with her Selena etc logo man you're really doing this it really is ha it's really happening thank you chris she said putting her head head on my shoulder and gazing happily up at the names and headlights after selena had opened at the boutique and corpus she decided that it would make sense to have a second salon and shop in san antonio the other city where we spent most of our time and where she had another great fan base in addition, my sister and other friends of ours would be able to staff the San Antonio boutique. About eight months after we opened the Corpus boutique, Selena op opened the second one on Broadway in San, San Antonio, coincidentally about a block and a half from the apartment where I had lived with my dad while Selena and I were dating. Because we were all so busy, already so busy, this venture were more, was more business-like than a labor of love. We hired people to complete the work we needed done inside and out, rather than trying to take that on ourselves. At the same time that Selena's boutiques became, began gaining traction, her career as an entertainer was moving at an even faster clip. She was busier than ever in 1994. Now her obligations include making music videos, the new industry standard, as well as recording vocals. 
the for instance the music video for La Yamada, one of Selena's biggest hits from the Selena Live album was shot on the rooftop of a beach house in Malibu, California, which meant that we all had to fly out there for two days. Many of the scenes in the video are of Selena singing with a crowd of people dancing around he, dancing around her as if she's a big party. Shooting them was fairly un uneventful. We had to spend a day playing through the songs over and over again, and then Los Dinos got to leave. Selena, however, had to stay for several hours because they were also shooting for her singing the song against a blue curtain. At one point, I went back up to the roof to see how she was doing. I was worried because the sun was going down, the darker it got, the colder and the windier it got. And Selena was wearing only a slim fitting black dress that couldn't be very warm. I found her with a blanket around her shoulders between shots. Still, Selena's teeth were starting to chatter and she was shivering. I put my arms around her, rubbing her shoulders to get warm up a little bit. How you doing? I asked. I'm freezing, she said. Yeah, I can tell. I don't think we have any jackets. I know. She said, I know, she said miserably. Want me to stay up here with you? No, no, I'm almost done, she said. Let me get you some coffee, at least, I said, and went off to find one of the assistants. They started shooting the video again as I made my way down from the roof. When I turned to watch... I saw that the blanket had come off Selena's shoulders and she, as she sung her heart out, she looked totally happy and warm. Selena was a natural actress who was professional enough to slip into a new mood as easily as most people put on a new outfit. Having so many obligations like that pulling at her made, made Selena depending more on Oompa. Oompa had done nothing to cause us to mistrust her at this point. In fact, in her unpaid position as, as Selena's San Antonio's fan club president, Oompa had worked hard to impress everyone in the family with her work ethic and commitment to Selena and the Kithania family. Oompa had even moved to Corpus Christi in 1993 and rented an apartment with a roommate in order to live closer to the Kithanias. Little did we know that her roommate had moved out within a few months as Oompa proceeded to turn the apartment to a shrine to Selena. All I saw was that Oompa had become a close friend to both Suzette and Selena. She also has become Selena's personal assistant, doing everything from helping her out with costume changes backstage to running interference between Selena and overzealous fans. The more un the more trustworthy Oompa seemed, the more trusting we all were with her. It was only natural then for Selena to offer Oompa an official paid position as a manager who will oversee being both the clothing boutique in Corpus and the store in San Antonio. The stores had local managers on site. In fact, my sister Trisha was managing the San Antonio boutique. But if I can't be there to do something, I'll feel better knowing that Oompa will take care of it, Selena told me. I agree with her decision. Selena was trying to juggle too much in her life, and Oompa had proven her loyalty. Dictator, too, thought that the idea made sense. He was relieved to have any amount of stress lifted off his daughter's shoulders. Oompa was put on a salary, and Selena gave her a credit card and a cell phone she could use for her business purposes. The more support Selena got for her new venture, the better, I thought. I was already out of my depth with the business, and I was wanting my wife to be happy. Everything went smoothly at first. If something needed to be done at, at one, one of the boutiques, Oba would either handle it or call us while we were on the road. Or if Selena was in corpus, Oba would help with her calendar. She seemed to diminish the intense pressure that Selena had been feeling since opening the boutiques, and for that, we are all grateful. As the months went by, Selena increasingly relied on Oompa for assistance, especially once she started thinking seriously about opening a third boutique where most of her fan base was in Monterrey, Mexico. We didn't know anything about managing a business. Oompa didn't either, but she acted like she knew, and we started leaning on her more and more. We were eager to be dependent of Dictator and eager to, and besides, Oompa had 
personal connections in Monterey and was always willing to drive down there with Selena to explore business prospects. I didn't really see Uber much, but if I happened to drop Selena off at the boutique in Corpus for her to get her hair and nails done, I chat with Uber for a few minutes. That was pretty much the extent of my interactions with her. Other than occasional lunches with Oompa and Selena, where they would talk about business or people they knew and I crack a joke here and there, I never saw Oompa as a threat. She was like all the other girls in high school and I used to feel sorry because they seemed to have no lives of their own. There was no reason to ever suspect that she was dangerous. In a weird way, I think all of us were probably even more accepting of her than we might have been if if Oompa had been another kind of woman, pretty or ambitious or clever, because we were so determined to judge her, not by her looks or talents, but by where her heart was. I will regret every day I lived that I was so blind. In the, my defense, I was young, I was in love, I had friends and a wife I adored. I was making music in a band that was cre increasingly successful, and I was making plenty of money. The way I saw things, Selena and I had a bright future ahead of us. My main concern was that Selena was happy as I was, and that seemed to be true. There was just one small thing. Looking back on it, probably should have been a red flag. It happened at one of our annual band parties. So soon after I became involved with Selena, Opa started arranging annual parties for the band members, their families, and close friends every year. Selena and I loved those parties. We thought it was cool to hang out in, in a restaurant or some other regular place with everybody together. Ironically, because our band was always working, it was difficult for us to find much time to socialize together. Gradually, as the years passed, however, I started to sense a growing distance and even a weird vibe between Oompa and some of the other people at the parties. I didn't know it at the time, but Oompa had started taking her role as Selena's personal assistant to the next level. People were wanted, wanted to reach Selena would increasingly have to get around Oompa first. So Suzette would stand up for Oompa if anyone complained about her though, and Selena herself would say, send them to Oompa. If someone wanted to see her and Selena was too busy, which was often the case. Anytime, anyway, at one of the, these part, band parties, the restaurant, bathroom was vandalized and selena had heard from Oompa that i had been involved in involved in it with other guys remember the way i had gotten drunk and that trashed the hotel room the year before our marriage no doubt made selena even more suspicious did you trash that bathroom chris she asked Oompa said you did no i said you know i couldn't have done that selena you know where i was we were together the whole time Oh, okay, Selena said, and we moved on to talk about something else. The conversation didn't really register with me at the time. Because of the band's success, Selena and I were always swatting away silly rumors. Maybe that's why I didn't see this conversation for what it really was. A warning sign that Uber was trying to come between Selena and me. The way that she was trying to make sure that Selena didn't get too close to anyone else. Despite Oompa's attempts to make trouble between us and increase pressure that came with being successful, Selena and I were more in love than ever. We worked as a team, whether we were taking care of the dogs or our house. In everything we did, I tried to follow the advice of a friend gave me before I got married. I don't think relationship a relationship can ever work if each person gives just 50%. That is true. Each person should be given 100%. He has said, "Not why not? I said, puzzled. That sounds fair to me. He shook his head. No, the real way to think about marriage is that you have to each give 100%. Selena and I both gave 100% to each other. We never kept score the way some couples we knew did. And with a, you did that, so I'm going to do this, kind of tally. We had no pet peeves with each other. We were best friends. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to finish the other second half of the last half of chapter 11 tomorrow because my neighbors are really, really loud upstairs and I'm getting very irritated at them and um, it's getting late and I'm getting tired. 
So I'll be back with another video for chap for the last part of chapter 11. Peace.